The Green Hornet television series aired on the ABC US television network in the 1966-1967 TV season, starring Van Williams as the Green Hornet, Britt Reed and Bruce Lee as Cato. The single season series premiered September 9, 1966, and ran through March 17, 1967, lasting 26 episodes. ABC repeated the series after its cancellation by the network, until July 14, 1967, when The Green Hornet had its last broadcast on network television. Topic. Plot Playboy bachelor and media mogul Britt Reid is the owner and publisher of the Daily Sentinel newspaper, but as the masked vigilante Green Hornet, he fights crime with the assistance of his martial artist expert Kato, Britt's crimefighting partner, and his weapons enhanced car, the Black Beauty, license plate V194. On police records, the Green Hornet is a wanted criminal, but in reality, the Green Hornet is masquerading as a criminal so that he can infiltrate and battle criminal gangs, leaving them and the incriminating evidence for police arrival. Beyond Cato, Brit's dual identity is known only to his secretary Lenore Casey. Case and District Attorney Frank P. Scanlon, Britt's motive for fighting crime was explained on screen. His father had died in prison after having been framed for a crime he did not commit. Topic <inaudible> <inaudible> Origin. The character had originated as the star of a radio series 1930s to 1950s, and it had previously been adapted to movie serials, comic books, and other media. Owing in part to George W. Trendle and Fran Stryker having created all the central characters and developed the core formats of both radio shows, Britt Reid shares the same family name as the Lone Ranger, as Britt's father had been the Lone Ranger's nephew Dan Reed. <laughs> Cast Van Williams as Britt Reed, Green Hornet, the owner and publisher of the Daily Sentinel and masked fighting hero, who masquerades as a villain. Bruce Lee as Cato, Britt Reed's valet and partner, who is also the Green Hornet's aide. Wend Wagner as Lenore Casey. Case, Reed's secretary at the Daily Sentinel, one of only two other people who know the true identities of the Green Hornet and Cato. Lloyd Goff as Mike Axford, a police reporter for the Daily Sentinel. Walter Brook as District Attorney Frank P. Scanlon, the other one of only two other people who know the true identities of the Green Hornet and Cato and knows the Green Hornet is a good guy. William Dozier as the narrator. Topic: Production. Despite character co-creator George W. Trendle's failed efforts to generate interest in a Green Hornet TV series in 1951 and 1958, the success of ABC's 1960s Batman series prompted the network to adapt the venerable radio and movie serial character. The series starred Van Williams as the Green Hornet and introduced martial artist Bruce Lee to American television audiences as his partner, Cato. Unlike the campy and humorous Batman series, the Green Hornet was played straight. Though it was cancelled after one season, Lee became a major star of martial arts movies. Lee's popularity in Hong Kong, where he was raised, was such that the show was marketed there as the Kato Show. The Green Hornet and Kato also appeared in two episodes of Batman titled, A Piece of the Action, Batman's Satisfaction. 
with Reed mentioning that he and Bruce Wayne had been acquaintances and rivals since childhood. Though other characters in the story were all led to believe wrongly that the Green Hornet and Kato were villains, as on The Green Hornet, the series, Roger C. Carmel acted out the show's real villain, who called himself Colonel Gum. Topic differences from radio version As with the later years of the radio version, Secretary Lenore Casey Case played by Wend Wagner is again aware of Reed's secret, and the Hornet also has a confidant within the law enforcement community, but now he is District Attorney Frank P. Scanlon played by Walter Brook. This character was changed from the original's police commissioner because the Batman TV series was already using a man in that post as the hero's official contact, and William Dozier, the executive producer of both programs, wanted to downplay comparisons between the two shows. Michael Axford Lloyd Goff, the bodyguard turned reporter of the radio series, is now solely a police reporter for the Daily Sentinel, the newspaper owned by Britt Reed, the Green Hornet. The first episode, The Silent Gun, provides a connection between the radio and the TV series, as Axford reminds Reed of the old days when he lived in the same apartment with Reed's father, which hints that Reed's father may have been the Green Hornet of the radio series. In this series, Reed owned a television station as well, there were visual differences as well. Promotional artwork for the radio program and the comic books of the day depicted the Hornet wearing a mask that covered all of his face below the eyes the two Universal Studios Saturday matinee serials contained a full face mask with eye holes, while Kato wore goggles. Here, both men wear masks that cover only the upper portions of their faces. These masks initially had a stylized angularity that soon proved problematic, neither man could see much. They were soon replaced with masks molded to the performers' faces. In a technological update, the Hornet carried a telescoping device called the Hornet Sting, which projected ultrasonic sound waves. He most frequently used it to open locked doors, although he was also seen using it to set things on fire presumably by vibrating them and causing heat through friction and to threaten criminals to get information. In the episode The Secret of the Sally Bell, the Hornet used it to explode the thug's gun, causing the thug to fall and suffer a concussion, resulting in the criminals being hospitalized. He also had a Hornet knockout gas gun. The television version Kato used green sleeve darts to give him a ranged attack he could use to counter enemies both at a distance and in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The impression Bruce Lee made at the time is demonstrated by Kato's Revenge featuring the Green Hornet, a TV series tie-in coloring book produced by Watkins and Strathmore. Topic. Theme music and opening Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov's orchestral interlude, Flight of the Bumblebee, used for the radio series, was so strongly identified with the Green Hornet that it was retained as the series theme, but it was rearranged by Billy May, who also composed the new background scores, and conducted by Lionel Newman, with a trumpet solo by Al Hurt, performed in a jazz style nicknamed, Green Bee. Each episode begins with the following monologue, narrated by producer William Dozier, Another challenge for the Green Hornet, his aide Kato, and their rolling arsenal, the Black Beauty. On police records a wanted criminal, the Green Hornet is really Britt Reed, owner-publisher of the Daily Sentinel, his dual identity known only to his secretary, and to the district attorney. And now, to protect the rights and lives of decent citizens, rides the Green Hornet. 
Years later, the Billy May music was featured in the 2003 film Kill Bill, Volume 1, starring Uma Thurman vs. David Carradine, in which Quentin Tarantino paid tribute to Cato by featuring the dozens of sword-fighting members of The Crazy 88, wearing Cato-style masks during one of the film's fight sequences. Topic Episodes PC equals production code number equals Topic Crossover with Batman TV series equals there were several comparisons and crossovers from Batman to Green Hornet, both on TV and in movies. Equals. Topic The Green Hornet and Cato on Batman equals Van Williams and Bruce Lee make a cameo appearance as the Green Hornet and Cato in window cameos while Batman and Robin were climbing a building. This was in part one of a two-part second season episode of the Batman TV series, The Spell of Tut, which aired on September 28, 1966. There is also mention of the Green Hornet TV series on the Batman two-part episode The Impractical Joker, transmitted on November 16, 1966, as Alfred, Dick Grayson and Bruce Wayne are watching television, and Bruce Wayne says, it's time to watch The Green Hornet. Later that same season, the Green Hornet and Cato appeared in the two-part second season episodes A Piece of the Action and Batman's Satisfaction, which aired on March 1-2, 1967. In the two episodes, the Green Hornet and Cato are in Gotham City to bust a counterfeit stamp ring run by Colonel Gum portrayed by Roger C. Carmel. Batman's satisfaction leads up to a mixed fight, with both Batman and Robin and the Green Hornet and Cato fighting Colonel Gum and his gang. Once Gum's crew is defeated, Batman and Robin square off against the Green Hornet and Cato, resulting in a standoff interrupted by the police. In this episode, Batman, Robin and the police consider the Green Hornet and Cato criminals, though Batman and Robin were cordial to the duo in the earlier window appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Batman and Robin on the Green Hornet In the December 9, 1966 The Green, Hornet episode the Secret of the Sally Bell. The Batmobile is seen on a television receiver, turning around inside the Batcave. In the February 3, 1967 Green Hornet episode, Ace in the Hole, which was transmitted in between the September 1966 and March 1967 Batman appearances mentioned above, an unidentified episode of Batman is seen playing on a television set, showing Batman and Robin climbing a building. One other appearance of the Green Hornet, Cato, and Batman was broadcast in autumn 1966 on a Milton Berle Hollywood Palace television variety show. Topic: Black Beauty. The TV series featured the Green Hornet's car, the Black Beauty, a 1966 Imperial Crown sedan customized by Dean Jeffries at a cost of $13,000. Two cars were built for the show, and both exist today. Black Beauty 1 is located in the Peterson Automotive Museum collection and Black Beauty 2 has been fully restored and is located in a private collection in South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Storage and deployment The Black Beauty was stored underneath Britt Reed's garage. 
A set of switches on a secret control panel behind a tool wall would sequentially set the lights to green, attach clamps to the bumpers of Reed's personal car, rotate the floor of the garage, hiding Reed's car and bringing up the Black Beauty, finally unclamping the Black Beauty's bumpers. The Black Beauty would then exit the garage through a hidden rear door, and enter the street from behind a billboard advertising the fictitious product Kiss and Candy Mint, with the slogan, How Sweet They Are, designed to separate down the middle and rejoin. <laughs> Weaponry, surveillance and security features The Black Beauty, which carried rear license plate number V194, could fire explosive charges from tubes hidden behind retractable panels below the headlights which were said to be rockets with explosive warheads, had a concealed when not in use, drop-down knockout gas nozzle in the center of the front grille and the vehicle could launch a small flying video, audio surveillance device referred to as the scanner through a small rectangular panel in the middle of the trunk lid. It was a foreshadowing of today's small helicopter-like drones. Working rockets and gas nozzles were incorporated into the trunk lid as well. <laughs> Other appearances Dragon, the Bruce Lee story The 1993 American semi-fictionalized film biography of Bruce Lee depicts Lee, Jason Scott Lee meeting fictional producer Bill Krieger Robert Wagner after a martial arts tournament, and being hired to play Kato in the Green Hornet series. The movie shows the fictionalized shooting of the first episode, where cast and crew are impressed by Lee's martial arts skills. Van Williams plays the director of the episode. Topic Batman 66 meets the Green Hornet Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman are co-writers of a Batman and Green Hornet team-up titled Batman 66 meets the Green Hornet. The issues were drawn by artist Ty Templeton, with covers by Alex Ross. The six-issue miniseries was co-produced by DC Comics publishers of Batman and Dynamite Entertainment current publishers of the Green Hornet titles. The overall story is a sequel to the above-mentioned Batman – Green Hornet two-part TV crossover episodes, reuniting Hornet and Kato with Batman and Robin, and pitting both teams against the now General Gum and his new criminal cohort, the Joker. The series was published both in physical comic book form and in an extended 12-part digital format splitting each regular issue's material into two digital issues. The full series has since been published in a collected volume, both in hardcover and trade paperback editions. Furthermore, Garman and Smith have performed dramatized readings of all six issues on podcast episodes hosted on Smith's Smodcast webpage. The first issue was dramatized in an episode of Smith's Fat Man on Batman podcast episode number 66, and the remaining five as episodes of Hollywood Babylon, co-hosted by Garman and Smith, as special Hollywood Babylon Comic Con Theater episodes episodes 175, 180, 184, 188 and 193. Topic Comics The TV series was adapted into a comic strip by Dan Spiegler, distributed by Gold Key Comics. <laughs> 